क्लास नंबर 27 इन दिस क्लास वी विल डिस्कस ए टॉपिक कॉल वीआरएफ वर्चुअल राउटिंग एंड फॉरवर्डिंग इट इज सिमिलर टू द वीलैन कांसेप्ट ऑन द स्विच सो वी यूज द वीलैंस टू लॉजिकली सेपरेट स्विचेस एंड इन दिस वीआरएफ वी डू द सेम थिंग बट ऑन द राउटर सो फ्रॉम अ सिंगल फिजिकल राउटर वी कैन क्रिएट लॉजिकल राउटर्स लॉजिकल राउटिंग टेबल्स so in this topology we have service provider and the main objective of service provider is to connect customers in different locations so let's say this location is in city new york let's say this location is in london so we have two customers customer a and customer b so they have offices in new york and london so instead of connecting the links by themselves uh, for the customers it's very expensive so that's why they chose to connect to the a service provider so service provider network is basically they have underlying infrastructure to connect to different cities so in this example we have this sp router so in reality we will have multiple routers but just to illustrate the vrf example i am just using only single router so customers in each location they will connect their routers to the service provider router if you see on new york side we have customer a and customer b they have routers and they are connecting to the service provider router same way the offices in london they are routers customer a router and customer b router connecting to the service provider router okay so even though we have single router or multiple routers in the service provider network the objective of the service provider network is to connect multiple customers so let's look at the subnets here so customer a on new york side has the 10/24 and on the london side 192168 so because most of the customers uses the private ip address internally so there is a chance that there we will we can have a conflict okay so pc2 network is also for the customer b in the same 10 network and other side is 192 so let's see if this topology if we would like to write routing for the customer networks on the service provider router for suppose if a packet comes to the service provider with the address falls in this range where we should send this traffic what we add as a next hop so once the traffic comes here we have two ways so customer a has this network customer b has this network for suppose customer a pc3 sending traffic to pc1 in the new york location so how do we differentiate or like segregate the traffic between different customers so when a packet comes to here with the destination address of 1000 something then we need to add a static route pointing here right but so far we didn't see anything specific uh, routes uh, we cannot add multiple routes here right so you can add multiple route this way and this way but actually the customer traffic is coming from this way so we should not send customer a traffic to the customer b same for the when customer b is trying to reach 10 network we should not send it to customer a so if you would like to solve this the another alternative is we can have another router here so you can take another service provider router and you will connect the customer b to it and you will only connect customer a to this another router so this way there is no issue so we can add routes and there is no mixing of customer traffic okay but if a service provider usually will connect more than two or like customers right so their network is to connect hundreds of customers so but they cannot add multiple routers for each customer so that is not cost effective solution so for that we can leverage a concept called vrf so it is similar to the vlans on the switches so we used the vlans on the switches so that we can divide a single physical switch into multiple logical switches so similarly vrf with the use of vrf we can create 
multiple routing tables on the same device. So we assign interfaces to a specific VRF and they will be part of that VRF. So on any router, similar to the VLANs, we have default VLAN 1, right? So also on any router, the default routing table name is default. So when you do show IP route, you will see the routing table name default, okay? So when we add the VRFs, let's say we add customer VRF A and VRF B. So what will happen is there will be three routing tables. One is default and another two that we created A and B. So you can by default all the interfaces will be part of the default routing table. So you will move this 193 to VRF A and you will move 2 and 4 to the VRF B. So VRF A will have interfaces 1 and 3 and related route routes and VRF B will have 2 and 4 with the related routes. So this way we use the same physical router and with using of the VRFs we divided into logically three parts. One is default, another one is VRF A and VRF B. So let's see how we can configure this and verify. So the first step is creating the VRF. Once entering into the configuration mode, we'll create VRFs for each customer. And there is a RD value we need to assign it to each VRF. Uh, this should be something unique between the VRFs in the same router. So here I'm giving one, one, here I'm giving two, two. So let's not discuss about this RD value in this class. Okay, so we just define two VRFs. So what will happen is now we divided this router into three parts. So there is default and there is VRF A, VRF B. So there are three routing tables now. Okay. So the next step is by default, all the interfaces will be part of the default, right? So now we need to move the interfaces into respect to customer VRF. So customer A connected to Ethernet 1 this side and Ethernet 3 this side. So we need to move these two interfaces to VRF A. So the commands will be you go to the interface and you specify that VRF forwarding customer A. Okay. You do the same for the customer B. Customer B is connecting to two Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 4. So you will take two interfaces and you add it to VRF B. So Ethernet 2 and 4 customer B VRF. So now we have three VRFs. Customer A has two interfaces, customer B has two interfaces. Now let's add the routing. First step is enabling the routing in VRFs similar to how we enable the routing on normal default but here we specify VRF and VRF name then we need to add the routes the command line structure is similar to the static routes on normal default VRF but here we need to specify which VRF we are trying to add the route so IP route VRF and VRF name 10 network so let's see so this is customer B customer B 10 network is here so we are adding the route here so we are saying IP route on the VRF customer B to reach 10 network the next hop is 2.2.2 .2 which is here okay so similarly we added the routes for all other networks in this topology So after configuring the VRF and routing, let's verify. So if you do show VRF, it will show what are all the VRFs we have created. So we have customer A, B and their RD values and what are the protocols it's supporting. So currently we are only using v force. That's why routing is enabled here. And you can see what interface is part of the VRF, Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2, Ethernet 3 for the VRF. A and for the VRFB we have 2 and 4 okay so that's the way we have divided this topology into two different parts so when the traffic comes from PC3 it will go here when it comes it will go here because when the traffic comes on Ethernet 3 it is part of the 
customer vrf a so then the routing table for that is the next half is 1.1.2 so it will come here and it will go here so ethernet 1 is part of the uh, customer vrf so when we look into the routing table of this one you will only see one route pointing this way so let's see the interface status so when you do show ip interface brief it is listing all the interfaces but when you specify show ip interface and the vrf name you are only seeing the interfaces part of that vrf <coughs> similarly same for customer b you see two interfaces with the IP now look at the routing table so when you do show IP route by default it's looking for the default VRF routing table as you can see VRF name is default so currently we did not add any routes into the default VRF there is no interfaces configured with the IP so that's why we are not seeing any connected routes or static routes so to see the routes in the specific VRF, we need to use the command show IP route VRF and VRF name. So when we do this, we only see routes related to the customer A only. So this side. So two connected routes based on the interface configuration and two static routes we added. So one is going through the Ethernet 1 and another for the Ethernet 3. So as you can see, there is no route pointing toward the customer B side infrastructure from the A okay similarly you can verify the routing table for the customer B so let's do a connectivity test so here we have PC1 so PC1 is this in the customer A VRF so we are pinging 192.168.0.1 so from PC1 standpoint, we don't know where this is. So you, let's see what happens to the packet when we do the trace. So it went to 10.0.0.254, which is the gateway here. Good. And then it went to 1.1.1. .1. So this is here. So it reached Ethernet 1 on service provider router. So Ethernet 1 is in the customer VRF A. So it will check the routing table for that VRF. Then as we added a static route this way, so it should send the packet to here, which is 3.3.2. So you can see it went to 3.3.2. Then obviously it will go here. Okay. Similarly, the return packet also follow the same path. So let's do PC2. From PC2, we are pinging 192.168.0.1. So PC2 is not aware of that this PC2 or this router does not know anything about the VRF. Okay, so when we sent packet from PC2, it came to the gateway and then it went to 2.2.1 here service provider router here service provider router has the VRF and based on the VRF routing table, it will send it this way. So we should see 4.4.2 next. See, then packet will go here and return path will also the same. So this concept is similar to the VLAN concept that we discussed in the previous classes, but this is for the routing. So build similar topology and verify connectivity with the VRFs. So you can build two VRFs or three VRFs and verify the VRF configuration with show VRF command and routing table with the show IP route and also do trace to see the path of connectivity from one PC in one VRF location to the another uh, same VRF in different location. Okay, So with the trace command you can verify that it is not going to a different customer environment. That's all for today's class. Thank you.